Hello, ladies. How are you today? We are coming at you from New Horizon, straight into your home, right where you're at. Uh, that's kind of the order of the day these days, right? We got to do what we can to stay connected. Absolutely. So Sandy, tell me, what are you doing? What are you doing? How are you surviving all of this uh, quarantine and stay at home stuff? Oh my goodness. Actually, I feel like it has, there's not been a down minute. Um, it, there's been fun things to um, plan for, catch up on. I have read more in this last little bit. It's been really, really cool. Um, and just getting to come to you guys. I feel like we could, I love getting to do this a little more often. It's a different way of staying connected, but I still feel like we're staying connected. So I have a very deep, dark question for you to answer. And you have to be real. Do you promise, Scout's Honor, you're going to tell the truth? Always. So are you getting up in the morning putting your makeup on, or are you just hanging out all day in your jammies? I have not only gotten up and gotten dressed put my makeup on every day, I've made my bed every day. I'm keeping the routine because it really helps. Absolutely. I have seen more people walking up and down our street, walking their dogs, which is cool, in their pajamas, in their pajama bottoms. Wrong. And their slippers, just it's hilarious, even out in the mud and everything like that. <laughs> so not of our house either. That is not kind of our go. Uh, in fact, actually yesterday I woke up uh, and I was kind of getting ready and I had the fleeting thought go through my head. You know, you don't need to make your bed today. Nobody else is. I'm like, I am making my bed. I am. This is my, and I thought to myself, this is my little place I can control. So I am in charge and I made my bed. And another fun thing is I have made a cool dinner from scratch every night, um, which, you know, it feels like a couple weeks ago, I was just like, maybe we'll have eggs for dinner tonight. <laughs> um, but I'm getting more creative with that, spending more time, you know, chopping everything up and getting prepared. And I'm loving that. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just, just fun times. Uh, I don't know about you, but, uh, well, I... I have my mom living with me, you know, and uh, she has actually been under quarantine now for probably, uh, it's been coming on almost four weeks now, um, three, four weeks. And um, uh, so she was asking me the other day, I think it was Saturday of last week, uh, how long, you know, how long have we been on this quarantine? I feel like it's been forever. And I was like, mom, <laughs> it was only four, just three days ago when Jay Inslee said this, this was last weekend or whatever. She goes, three days? How could that be? And so I was trying to convince her that she had no idea what she was talking about. And, uh, and she was like, what? It just feels like it's been forever. And then we realized that yes, she actually has been on a heavier quarantine, not coming to church, even when we were coming to church because she's elderly. So I had to give that back to her that she wasn't losing her mind. She is not a sharp lady, but I was thinking about her this morning and thinking how long it has been for oh her goodness. and what she must be feeling like. She truly has lost what day of the week it is. I mean, just because. There's just no marker. But anyway, uh, we are going to uh, do a little bit of talking here. Uh, we got some fun things coming up, though. Uh, so be watching for amazing things here at New Horizon. We've really got, fun. yeah, we've got some Easter's coming up. I know that's going to date this uh, little podcast here. But uh, so if you're listening to, to this and Easter's gone, Oh, well, uh, but we got Easter coming up and we're actually going to do Easter really amazing around here. We've got some really fun things. Uh, we're giving out communion little cups in a Easter pack to our neighborhood all around us and encouraging them to join us. We have a Easter art drive through on Saturday that is a complete uh, quarantine friendly uh, coronavirus, uh, social distancing friendly, but yet still getting our community together. Uh, it's going to be really fun. And we are going to become uh, the Northwest, uh, no, the Pierce County Emergency Net Food Network. I don't know if those are all the right words in the right order. Drop place. And so we're going to be handing out food all throughout the week. You know what? It's going to be fun. It's going to be amazing. Right from the curb, they drive up, we put it in the back seat, they drive away. Gloves, masks, the whole thing. But we are touching our community. We're never going to give up. That's Amazing. I am so excited for that. And I'll say one more thing about Easter. If you are catching this before Easter and you either already bought candy that you had intended to bring to church or you're going to be buying candy and want to grab an extra bag sometime before next, say, Thursday, let us know that you're going to be coming in and go ahead and bring that by. Don't eat it yourself. Trust me, not a good plan. <laughs> bring it by and your kids don't need all of it either. Just save back what they need and bring us the rest to put in the bags for the community. Absolutely. It's going to be so much fun. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah.
Okay, girl, I have a word for you, and it's just been burning in my heart, and I am so excited to bring it to you, and uh, so I just would really encourage you right now to get your Bibles, either turn them on or open them up, depending on how you do this, and uh, I want to just bring to you something out of Judges, uh, Judges 6, so if you would open to that uh, passage there, it's a passage about Gideon, so let's pray, okay? Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for your life and your word and your encouragement and inspiration. And Father God, right now, I pray right now that the Spirit of God would take flight on my words in Jesus' name. My flesh, mouth, Lord God, would take on uh, heavenly uh, expectations in Jesus' name. Lord, we love you. Amen. So Judges 6, let's get into this. This is a story of Gideon, and you know we all know the story of Gideon. How many times have we heard it? How many times have we told it? But I want to bring out some really amazing things that just have come to life in my world here lately. So uh, Judges 6 opens up again, again. Have you ever heard this again? Uh, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. And, you know, this is just so indicative to human nature, the cycle of sin and righteousness close to God, far away from God. We are on this roller coaster because we're humans. And uh, it, it's, it's common across, across the whole human race. Again, it, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And for seven years, he gave them over to the hands of the Midianites. And then it goes on here for a couple of ch uh, verses. And you can read through it if you'd like, that talk about the seriousness of this oppression. So the Midianites are taking their food from them. The Midianites are, are just making life, they're, they're like, they're just, they're making life absolutely miserable. And I want to pick it up uh, in verse 7 then again. I'm just going to get us real quick down to the portion of this story that I'm trying to get us to. Uh, but verse 7, it says that the Israelites cried out to the Lord. And, you know, that is the moment where after we w stray from the Lord, we stray, we, we maybe dabble in some sin, maybe we take on some things that we really don't, uh, you know, that really aren't us. And then we find ourselves outside of the covering and protection of the Lord. And we find ourselves getting into oppression, getting into trouble, getting into struggle. And I would uh, like to venture to say that that's where the world is finding itself right now in the middle of this coronavirus. Outside of the protection of God, outside of His, His divine purpose for us, just due to our own decisions and our own choices and, and the things that the the just humanity in general is taken on. But now we have in verse 7, the Israelites crying out to the Lord. And that's where we're at right now. And uh, he, sent, uh, he sent them a prophet who said, uh, and, the, and it kind of goes through uh, a, little, a few verses there. And I'm going to skip down now to verse 11. And it shows us that the angel of the Lord came and sat down under a tree and uh, found Gideon in a very strange place. He was in a, uh, a wine press threshing out grain. Now, a wine press is not made for threshing out grain. A wine press is made to crush grapes. And he is in this crazy, and I'm not, you know, I wish I could describe to you wine presses versus threshing floors, but they're two very different places. But he finds himself in a situation where he can't do what's normal. He can't do normal anymore. He has to start thinking outside of the box, and he starts thinking about new strategy. And he says to himself, I've got me some wheat, and I have hunger, hungry family, and I have a wine press. I'm going to make this thing work. I'm not going to sit around and make excuses. I'm not going to say, I can't do it because I don't have a threshing floor. Or I can't go in, you know, why do I have a wine press? I don't even have grapes. He put, he put new strategy together. And that's what we're being called to do these days. We cannot see all the hindrances of what we have given us and make excuses. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to and I've thrown out new strategy ideas, new outside the box. And all I get back is how it won't work. And I am guilty of that myself. But at this point in time, girls, this is a time for us to stop giving excuses and start seeing new strategy for what it, it might be. So he's, at this, uh, he's in this wine press and he's threshing out wheat. And this angel comes to him and he says, he, uh, when the Lord uh, appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. So he immediately begins to address him as the Lord sees him. And Gideon immediately throws something back. But sir, 
If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened? And so we find questions now being thrown back at the angel of the Lord from Gideon. And I'm not going to lie. If I were you know, hiding out under oppression, you know, under stress, under problems, and an angel comes to me, I would probably ask him a lot of questions too. Uh, would you? Would you take his words at faith value? I don't know. So uh, why is this happening to us? Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt was another question. And the Lord says to him, go in the strength that you have. Go in the strength that you have. And that removes every single excuse that we might have. Go in what you got. Go in what you got and save Israel. Save Israel. You mean I'm going to do something really huge just with what I've got? Absolutely. That's how God calls us. Um, and then he throws another, another um, question. But Lord, how can I save Israel? And he keeps going back and forth. And he says, I'm going to be with you. You will strike down all of the Midianites together. And that's the promise that the, the angel of the Lord gives Gideon is that he is going to strike down the Midianites. And now, now we find Gideon going into his... He's trying to get proof and trying to really know that it's the Lord. And I'm going to skip through that. And finally, at the end of all the fleeces and the water and all that kind of thing, uh, we find uh, in verse 22, when Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, O oh, sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace, do not be afraid. So you'd think the angel of the Lord would have many, many words to say to a, a young man who's finally got it, got it. Yes, you are the angel of the Lord. But his word was peace. And I, I find that to be very, very interesting. You are not going to die. You are going to overcome here. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. Now you have heard many times, I'm sure, through your years of, of church going about the names of God. There's Jehovah uh, Sitkanu, there's Jehovah Rapha, God my healer, God my righteousness, God my... And it's, it's, they're all based in situations in the Bible where someone has had an amazing, extraordinary experience uh, with the Lord and now they're starting to see the personality or the characteristic of God and they name him that characteristic. And in this moment right here, Gideon calls God. He says, you are... The Lord of peace, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shalom. And this is the situation where Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace, was birthed right here where we start to see it. What, what is the situation? The situation is awful. There's oppression. There's not enough. There's, there's difficulty. But this is the moment that Gideon calls God Jehovah Shalom. So I want to take a minute right now, and now that you kind of have the, the feel, the vibe, that we're, I want to just really focus in here, hone in on the word shalom, the word peace. We've been talking about it a lot. We've been praying peace into your life. You have probably in the last couple of weeks had many, many opportunities to lose your peace. Peace is something that uh, in this time frame right now, it is a commodity that is needed across the world. And uh, so I want to really hone in on this. And I want you to see that God brought peace in the middle of a very huge storm. And uh, so it's not something, you know, that's taken lightly. It's, it's for these times. Um, let's talk about what shalom is. Shalom is the greeting. Uh, when people come and go in Israel, they, they will say shalom. Shalom is much more than just peace. And I want to take a second right now and help you understand and expand your, your thought process as to what peace is. When I think of peace, I want to be, I want a peaceful home. I want peace. I just need a little peace. How many of you have yelled that with your kids running around? Uh, to me, it's a it's a, it's a situation where maybe there's a lake there. The, the thing that comes to mind, there's a lake, there's some trees, I'm in the woods, the birds are singing, the sun is out, I'm just the right temperature. It's so peaceful. It's so wonderful. Or maybe the thought that comes to your head is maybe a tropical beach. The waves are crashing, the palm beach, the palm trees are, are waving, it's a warm time, and, and you just hear seagulls, maybe it's such a peaceful moment. And that's, that's maybe the, 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 what peace means to you. But I want to bring it outside of a situation, and I want to put it into its actual meaning. Because we can't 
if, if we base our peace on our situation, we're not going to have it. 90, I, I am only sitting on a Hawaiian beach maybe two, day, two days, half a day, every couple of years. <laughs> or every year, I don't know, however often you, you're able to get to a tropical beach. But here's what peace truly is. Peace, and I know you've heard this, and I just want to bring life to this. Peace in reality, in the Jewish term, in, in the depths of it, its meaning, means that there is nothing broken and there's nothing missing. Peace means that all is right, that all is well, that all is set into place. And you might be saying, well, Joel, you're not, now you're talking about uh, circumstances again. I'm telling you what, I would have peace if my kids would this and my husband would this and, and if we had this, and we had, I would have peace. But I want to show you that the peace that God wants to bring is beyond that. It passes all understanding. Um, a huge, um, uh, the, the peace, the place of peace that I really want you to understand first and for, foremost was in creation, that, those first couple chapters of the Bible. When God made the earth, when he created the earth, everything was at peace. There was nothing broken, there was nothing missing. Everything was at peace. And that peace included all things and all relationships. Everything was well. And so I want you to, every time we reference peace, I want you to reference what was the world like before sin entered. Because in reality, when God created that garden, that Garden of Eden, where there was everything was at peace. There was no strife. There was no stress. There was no issues. There was no lack. There was no sickness. There was no war. There was no evil. There were no hurtful words being said. There was no memory of hurt. There was no memory of pain. There was no sin because sin had not happened yet. And when sin happened, sin came in and shattered peace. Sin is the thing that removes peace. Sin is the thing that absolutely destroys peace. And sin destroyed the peace of this world, the peace of earth, the peace of humanity. And it, one stroke and it was gone. It was absolutely gone, shattered. That perfect peace was gone. The goal of the Lord God ever since that moment was to restore relationship but also to restore peace, to bring things back into right, to bring things back into balance, to bring things back into wholeness and into completeness. And that is why whenever there is, uh, you know, Jesus comes forth, he talks about the peace that he intends to bring into your life. Now I'm gonna talk about this peace in two different levels. First of all and foremost is the peace that God wants to bring inside of your soul inside of your soul the first work of christ is to bring your soul back into wholeness that back in, that in your soul that we can return back to the the garden we can return back to where everything is whole again and where nothing is missing and this is such an amazing journey that every christian has the ability to do and the opening to do is to bring a place within us back into peace and my first drive here, my first point is to you, as I look at you women, as I speak and talk into your soul right now, is that God wants to bring a peace in your soul that has nothing to do with what's going on around you. The walk of the Holy Spirit inside of you is to heal everything within. Number six, I want to read this to you. This has been a song that's just been going on, you know, Elevation has written this song called The Blessing. And it's just resounding in my heart and my soul all day to day. And it's taken out of this, this passage here, the priestly blessing. And it starts uh, number six with verse 22. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you. This is God speaking to you every day. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Not give you enough money to pay the bills. Not give you joy. Not give you, I don't know, fill in the blank. But his goal is to give you peace. 
That's the blessing that God has given us on a daily base, basis. And it's something that we have to find every single day. So peace, peace, he's there to give you shalom. Peace in every way. And uh, so let's, let's talk, I'm gonna give you another, um, another uh, a verse here. Jeremiah 6, 14. And I want you to turn to here because here we find, um, because I want this peace to be real. It can't be fleeting. This has to be real in the very center depths of your being. Jeremiah, uh, there's a little section here uh, where Jeremiah is speaking to, um, uh, to the, the people of Israel, and they're in a bad way. The, Israel had gone through another sin cycle, and they're crying out to the Lord, and, and they're under oppression, and they're having difficulty. And, and at this point, um, I'm just going to read this. Jeremiah 6, I'm going to read. start reading from verse 13. From the least to the greatest, all are greedy for gain. Prophets and priests alike, are all they all practice deceit. They dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. So they're talking, uh, he, this, they're talking, he's talking here about the priests, the church leaders, the teachers that are in this situation where the people of God are, they are ill. They are not healthy. Problems are coming. There's gaping wounds in their souls. But these pastors, these, these leaders, they dress the wounds of my people as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say when there is no peace. So these leaders are all these pastors, these, these prophets, these teachers are saying, peace, shalom, shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Everything's fine, you, you know, to these people. But they have gaping wounds in their soul. So what are these gaping wounds? Some of these gaping wounds are actual sin that these people are committing, that they are not completely yielded to the Holy Spirit in. They've got areas in their life that they're not living correctly or rightly or properly. Now remember, I told you what sin does to shalom. Sin in any way, shape, or form, any time we miss the mark, breaks our shalom. It crushes it. We can't have sin in our hearts and our lives and shalom, true shalom deep inside because they, the two can't reside together. The two can't abide together. So I really want to encourage us as we are seeking peace and as we're seeking to really walk in the peace of God, which is an amazing thing, that we really keep an eye of what's going on in our heart and soul. And I have a verse here that's really going to give you some good hands-on understanding as to how to do this. Uh, I want you to open up, uh, turn over to Isaiah 26, if you would, uh, with me. And I'm just going to close up here with this very, very precious passage because it just um, it really helps us to put an understanding as to what we're going to do with this piece and how we're going to get this piece so keep in mind sin anything separate separated from God anything uh, missing the mark is going to be something that is going to rob us of peace because peace and shalom can our sin and shalom cannot abide together wherever there's sin it breaks and shatters our peace so Isaiah 26, uh, verse 2, open the gates that the righteous nation may enter, the nation that keeps the faith. Now there's verses also in the New Testament, and I don't have the actual um, uh, uh, address to those, but it talks about keeping the obedience to the faith. Girls, this is a time where we must stay obedient to our faith. That we may not, we must not disobey the Lord in faith. We can't get into doubt. We can't get into disbelief. We can't get into fear. Do you know what the antithesis of fear is? Love and peace. They are absolutely two opposites. So when you're in the peace of God, you cannot be in fear at the same time. Fear, operating in fear. Fear can come to us. Fear can knock at the door. Fear can drive by in our hearts and minds. But if we choose to engage in it, now we are engaging in something that is the exact opposite of peace. And so just the, the obedience to fear. Oh, are you kidding me? What if? Ah, that peace right there is going to rob us of peace. That chunk will rob us of peace. So getting back to this, the nation that, uh, open up the gates that the righteous nation may enter, the nation that keeps the faith. You will keep in perfect peace. 
him or her whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever for the Lord, the Lord is the rock eternal. So let's break this down really quickly. Last minutes that we have. God will keep the person in perfect peace whose mind is steadfast in him. So this is, this is a time in scripture, it doesn't happen very often, I think this is the only time actually, where peace is described as perfect. Now the word perfect, if you actually look it up in the Hebrew, what Jeremiah writes here is that you will keep in perfect peace or you will keep in shalom, shalom. Remember I told you that, that, that shalom means everything is perfect, nothing broken, nothing missing. So he's actually, this is a double door of peace here, that your peace will be perfect in this situation. He will keep in peace. You, God, you will keep in perfect peace. God has a piece of this. He wants to be active and cocooning you and surrounding you and keeping you in not just peace, but perfect peace. Now, sometimes our peace is something, it, it, it maybe has some frayed edges around it. We know where peace is, and we stand here, and it's a small little island because everything else that wants to encroach on our peace is all around us, and it's very close, but we're going to stand on peace. But you can see right over there is a reason to worry. Right over there is a problem, right? And it's so close. And in the middle, as you're standing on your peace, you could actually be anticipating something something to come along that's going to steal your peace. So what God is saying, I want to keep you in perfect peace. That perfect peace means that you can look far out, far away from where you're standing in your peace, and you don't see where your peace is going to end. It's perfect peace. It's shalom, shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken in in your state of nothing missing, nothing broken. I know it's kind of a, a deep thing, but it, it's very interesting how he says this. God will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is steadfast. Uh, is steadfast. Let's leave it right there. Steadfast. Whose mind is steadfast. Steadfast. What does steadfast mean? It means stuck. It means set. It means bolted to. It means... I am this. This is what I am. Now, girls, I know that going through the day, you can be steadfast on, on the Lord when you're having your devotions. And then you can leave your devotion, and now there's other things that you fix your mind on, that you think about. Now, I love that. You have to look at your kids. You have to make dinner for your husband. You have to uh, take the dog for a walk. You have to do other things. You have to think about other things. We can't just sit in the Word all day. But what this is talking about is what is the chatter in the back of your head? What is the chatter? Do you watch the news because you're trying to stay up and you want to know what's going on? That's fine. But if now your mind is steadfast on what they're saying, or your mind now becomes fixated on that conspiracy theory that floats through, or what is your mind steadfastly fixed on? And he says here, he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is steadfast. And he trusts in the Lord because he trusts in the Lord. So it comes down to who do you trust? Do you trust Trump? Do you trust CNN? Do you trust Fox News work? Do you trust Facebook? Do you trust that person on Facebook that keeps feeding you what your mind is steadfast on? Or are you going to trust God? And I will tell you right now, God has everything under control. He has always had everything under control. He is in charge. And if you'll put your mind steadfastly and trust in Him, then He can keep you in perfect peace. But if you choose to steadfastly set your mind somewhere else, you're not going to. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord is the rock eternal. He is the rock. And I'm, I have another sermon I'm going to preach to you about, about Him being the rock, and I cannot wait for that. But I just want to really encourage you that uh, we do not sit in carnal peace. Peace made by our own thought processes. But we enter into a divine peace, a peace filled by Him, a shalom, a true shalom. And it's a perfect shalom. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God, I pray for you. 
I pray right now that, that the shalom of God is yours. That in the middle, just like Gideon found you and named you Jehovah Shalom as he is in the middle of the biggest struggle for his nation and for his family. That God, you would show up as Jehovah Shalom in our lives. That we would look to you and call you. Yes, you are Jehovah Shalom. And Lord Jesus, right now, I just love you and I praise you. Amen. Now, girls, the scripture says we are in Christ. Christ is in us. He's also promised that the peace that he leaves with us is not the peace of the Lord, or of the world, sorry, but it's the peace of heaven. And that's what I'm leaving with you. Amen? Love you.